again. Okay. So guys, uh, you know what we're doing essentially is we're just walking around the peak, right? So we're going to have like a 360 view over the region that the Meron Mountain uh, commands over. And uh, now we're looking uh, northeast, right? So again, you can see the Hermon Mountain, the skiing up on the top of the Hermon Mountain. And, uh, and uh, you can even see now a bit better the, the volcanic tufts in the distance. Do you see the volcanic tufts along the, the northern Golan region? So those uh, ancient roots that we talked about that carry on from the Fertile Crescent, the ancient roots that, co that connect between Egypt, between the Nile Delta and the Delta of the, of the Tigris and the rivers down in the, in the, in the north. We have to, Israel essentially is a highway number one of the ancient world and that international highway is connected between those two worlds. However, it doesn't pass through this region. The, the ancient highways don't come through here. The ancient highways don't go through Jerusalem either. Where do the ancient highways go down to? They go down to Beit Shan, they go through the Jezreel Valley, they go through Megiddo, Har Megiddo. Har Megiddo, they get the Greek mispronunciation, you end up with Har Megiddo, right? Har Megiddo. They go through the Israeli coastal plain, which is via uh, Mali uh, to where the sea, and it goes down through Gaza uh, into Egypt. So this region and Jerusalem, there's no reason to come up here, not for trade, not for caravans, not for ocean, not for anything. That's why the people that are living up here can live uh, pretty much free of the uh, uh, persecution of the empires of the Palestinian side. We said that the border, the natural border of the of Upper Galilee, is not where the, uh, where the where the politics, the political border lies, the international border lies. Rather, another 25 kilometers north of it. So it's very very easy to see actually the political border, the northern border of Israel. In fact, in the in the winter months, it's a little bit more difficult, but in the summer months, it's it's very very clear. And uh, that's quite clearly the green line. Everyone's heard of the green line, right? Yeah. So there is actually a green line. Of course, the green line has nothing to do with the northern border of Israel. The green line is the, is the marking of Moshe Dayan and of Dalatel in Jerusalem with the armistice agreement between the division between the Israeli yeah. forces and the Jordanian forces in Jerusalem. However, you hear about the green line, you hear about the green line all the time. Actually, this one in the international border is called the blue line. The United Nations is the blue line, but it's green. So check it out, what's green about it? We said Mount Meron is the largest na nature park in Israel, 100,000 dunams. Israel has nature parks, Israel has uh, uh, agriculture, okay? Israel is the only country that per annum has more trees in it than any, uh, than the previous year. It's the only country in the world like that that gets more trees per annum. And indeed, as you watch the border of Israel come to the northern extremity, you can see the difference between Israel and Lebanon very, very clearly. It's a green line, now guys? You can see the green line? So everything to the north of the trees that you can see, those that is Lebanese, that is the Lebanese hills, that is the Lebanese villages. And uh, Israel uh, had the, uh, the first time that Israel had major problems with uh, Lebanon, apart from the War of Independence, yes, because Lebanon was one of the countries, was in the 1970s, when the Palestinian Liberation Organization was, was uh, kicked out of Jordan after Black September to assassinate the kids in Jordan, they make their way to Lebanon. And from Lebanon, they launch their attack into Israel. And many attacks are launched into Israel. It leads us towards the first Lebanon war. The first Lebanon war in the early 80s, when Menachem Begin uh, goes uh, to Sharon and, uh, and make it all the way to Beirut, right? That's where we have the stories of uh, Israeli, the Israeli army that takes their exit into Beirut, the stories of Sabra and Shatila, the camps inside Beirut. That's in the 1980s. Israel was drawn to a security band which he sits in for, uh, for nearly uh, 18 years, something like that, until the year 2000, when Ehud Barak, the late, the, not the late, the previous prime minister, well, yeah, the he, moved, he withdrew from the Lebanese territory and withdrew back to the blue line. But what line is he going to withdraw back to, right? So there's all the, where does the blue line come from in the first place? That is, of course, the, the fact that we, Israel, are the inheritors of the British mandate. And Lebanon is the inheritance of the uh, inheritance French. of the French Lebanese Levant uh, mandate to the north. That line was set in the late in the 1920s. If I told you that the Jews were in with the British fighting, and that's why we went to the Versailles uh, peace treaty, right? We had two corps inside planted inside the British army. But where were the French? In Lebanon, Syria. The French in oh. 1917, 1918, when General Allenby were making their way through this. Through this, through this country, where I don't know where they were. They were in the Shantan Egypt. They were drinking coffee. They were eating croissants. They were, they were, they were doing something else.
us, they were busy, they weren't here. And essentially, who conquers this land? It's Alan B. It's Anzac. It's the Australian New Zealand uh, core. And we have the British graves all through the land of Israel, from Ramla, the largest one, Jerusalem. I'm sure you guys noticed the British uh, army graves just next to the, the Mount Scopus uh, Hospital. So it's the British that conquer the Palestine. And they have it in their hands. And they are now dictating where the borders are. Okay? So, for example, in the Golan, the Golan was supposed to be incorporated into the British mandate. But when the British realized that in the French mandate of Mosul, which was supposed to be in Syria, French Syria, where they went for a little walk, they did a breath of fresh air, and they found that there was oil underneath it, then they went to the French and said, you know what, Mr. French person? Monsieur, you take the Golan, we'll take Mosul. 